Uh, let me go to David in Maryland. Hello, David. Hello, Glenn. Thank you for taking my call. You bet. Hey, I, I am a, a trucker down here in the States. Uh, I've been driving for 30 years. And uh, I'm not real sure what. I've been, I've been trying to work through what I'm going to do if called upon to stand up. Um, I actually have friends, business owners, even even people from my church saying, hey, we will financially support you if you choose to go. And I'm looking at them saying, do you see what's going on 500 miles north of us here? And you're, I don't know that I, I want to put them in that position. You know, we have a, my wife has a, a small business, home-based business. She's a tutor out of our home. And I'm like, honey, you know, we could really risk losing everything if I go. But on the other hand, I'm really feeling called to go. I never thought, Glenn, that I would face what I call a founder's moment, but mm-hmm. it very well may be my life, my my fortune, as small as it is, and my sacred honor of being labeled an insurrectionist or a terrorist. I mean, I've got to consider all of that, and what what is it going to literally cost me to go down and say, you know, freedom? And like your caller said, yeah, they've got a blueprint now. They've got something that they can implement to counter what what the convoy would do. So, yeah, I'm walking into this thing, or literally driving into this thing, right into the teeth of the thing, knowing exactly what's coming. But I'm still feeling somewhat compelled to go and and take a stand. I will tell you, uh, this is, David, we are all going to have to go through this um, dilemma. All of us. Um, we, you're just one of the first to have to do it. And I think this is a really good thing uh, that you're, you're going through. Uh, I mean, I'm really sorry. Uh, whichever way you decide, you will choose a side. And everybody's going to have to. And as Dietrich Bonhoeffer said, not to stand is to stand. You are making a commitment if you just stay silent. And I'm not telling you which decision you should make. Everybody has to make that on their own. Um, but I, I think I, I will pray for you. And I would ask our audience to, to, uh, to pray for David and anybody like David. Which way are you leaning right now, David? Going. I, I can't look at this point in time in American history and shrink back and think someone else is going to do it. I would, I'm, been, I really listened to the words of your intro song, you know, to stand up, to hold the line. It's time to do something. And Glenn, here's the, here's the thing that really has me, I'm wrestling with. I'm a Christian. My wife and I are believers. This isn't, a, we, we don't have a let's go Brandon sign or a sticker or a flag or anything like that. We have, we literally do not make our politics known at all and we're not doing this as a political statement this freedom that we're fighting for is something that's guaranteed in the constitution that gives freedom to every american citizen we don't care if they're gay straight black purple whatever it's freedom we're asking the government to give us back our freedom when all of this happened with COVID, Glenn, my first question was, how do the American people get the power back that the government seized during all of this? How do they get the power back to open their businesses? How do they get the power back to freely associate? How do they get the power back to go back out and live their lives? They don't. So if we don't stand now, there's no going backwards from here. It's only going to go forward. So somebody's got to stand. And if at first, Glenn, it was the first responders, it was the nurses, the doctors, you know, yeah, the truckers, we trucked all the time and just hauled freight, but those were the people that were in front. And now look what they're doing to them if they don't get the shots. Well, now, if it's the truckers' turn to stand up, Glenn, I've got to stand. I know I have to stand. I can't, I'm just about ready to burst into tears. I can't sit here and watch this go by knowing I've got three adult daughters, 25, 23, and 21, that are just starting their lives and saying, ladies, I'm sorry, you're going to have to put up with whatever's coming. I can't do that. 
David, I'm maybe... Sorry, man. I'm <laughs> no, no. Maybe three or four times in the history of this show, and it's always a pivot. Someone will call in and speak the words that so many are feeling, and it's never, it's never with bravado. It's always with deep reflection and sorrow that they speak those words. You are that caller for this time. Hold on, David, because I want to give you a bit of something to chew on uh, over the next few days and weeks and months. David, the, the reason why uh, I say there's always, there's always a caller, and there's been maybe three in uh, the last 20 years, 22 years of my broadcast, um, that speak from the heart and speak the truth. There are a lot of callers that have a lot of bravado, and I will have even bravado from time to time. But those are the things that led us to the Declaration of Independence, and that's good. But that, that is the summer soldier, That is the summer soldier, somebody who is there when it's nice and warm and everything is great and we're having these, you know, we think we're on top of the world and yeah, let's let's break away. Let's break away from England. And then the reality sets in. And I think that's what's happened here. That's what is happening, at least in my house. The reality of where and when we are is beginning to set in. And now it's not necessarily... Um, there there can be no hyperbole because you're going to have to do one or the other. And now we're all thinking, okay, well, what does this mean for me? Because it's just up at the border and we're seeing the same kinds of things being done with the January 6th investigation. And we see how they are trying to go after people's banks, bank accounts. When we went into the into the war it was in july and we started fighting after the signing of the declaration of independence and we lost every single battle until december 25th that year every battle we lost we were in retreat on december 23rd thomas paine wrote these words these are the times that try men's souls The summer soldier and the sunshine patriot will, in this crisis, shrink from the service of their country. But he who stands by it now deserves the love and thanks of man and women. Tyranny, like hell, is not easily conquered. Yet we have this consolation with us. The harder the conflict, the more glorious the triumph. What we obtain too cheap, we esteem too lightly. It is dearness only that gives everything its value. And heaven knows how to put a proper price upon its goods. And it would be strange indeed if so celestial as a, of an article as freedom should not be highly rated. The government with an army to enforce her tyranny has declared that she has a right, fill in the blank, But that's to bind us in all cases whatsoever. And if being bound in that matter is not slavery, then there is no such thing as slavery upon the earth. Read Thomas Paine and keep him with you, David. I think your heart is in the right place. You sound like you are right with God and you have a peaceful... uh, a peaceful heart. Your feelings of trepidation are warranted. But if God is with us, who can stand against us?